Tonight's episode of the Sunday Night Talk on the Running It Back Network is here. It's ready because it is week eight and it's Sunday night. Before we get to the episode, I want to remind you, if you're new to the Running It Back channel on YouTube, please subscribe to it. We picked up a few new subscribers next week, so welcome everybody. This is my show. This is the Sunday Night Talk runs every, well, Sunday night. We recap our weeks, our lives, our emotions as they go through the roller coaster that is the NFL season. And today is no different. Not to mention all my stand up clips and my other series of YouTube shows are up on the channel. It's all there. Give it a subscribe, give it a like. We're here for that. Omar joins me as usual after a rough 49ers loss. We talk about the bounce back that happened in the NFL season. We talk about non contact injuries, Dallas, and of course, because of the big news, a Matthew Perry tribute as well. The Sunday Night Talk is here for week eight in the NFL on the Running It Back Network. So here we go. All right, it is Sunday night, recording this 9.55 Central Time. The Sunday night game is not over. However, this was a week to start the recording early. Omar Carmona joins me. Bears at LA Chargers. It is currently 30 to 7. This uh I, 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 I refused I refused to watch this game. Yeah, did you really? You were texting me like I can't I can't take this. Yeah, so I just, just turned it watch. off. What what's going I on? Don't, I don't want to watch bad football. And, Do you think and, it was and, bad football? Do you think it was sloppy? Because uh, the Chargers are at least getting first downs and stuff. It wasn't penalties. It wasn't sloppy turnovers. But it was not exciting. I'll give you that. Uh, Chris Collinsworth did his best job to make a 30-7 to game exciting. Yeah, but, you know, the, I, I think both teams are just underperforming. Um, I expected, believe it or not, I expected a lot more. It's funny how these teams in the AFC and NFC respectively are. Because I kind of have them on similar like uh, mm. tracks when this year started. I thought they were both going to be a lot better. Um, you really I thought, thought so, huh? I really did. I thought Justin Fields was going to like have like another improvement, you know, built on that on on those monster games where he was racking up a lot of running yards and all that rushing yards. I'm sorry, and and then like I thought, you know, Herbert was going to have another year, and you know, and this was a good game, um, but I, I just think also the Bears are that bad. This was definitely a game that looked way better in September than it did now. We're in year four of the Herbert project. We we just seen one horrendous playoff loss. It's I I think overall his stock is down. I know he looked good today and he won today despite having a large Steve DeBerg s cast on that middle finger. Which by the way, I think you and I could have done a better job of taping than what I saw right. out there today. That was. Really weird, <clears throat> the Herbert cast. And in the Bears, we got this coach whose name I still can't pronounce. Fields looks disinterested, even from the sidelines. He looks like yeah. he looks like he's hiding from somebody on the sidelines. And the bubble looks to have burst on Badgett, who last week, of course, looked like an all-pro against my Raiders. And now is just checkdowns, got sacked, a couple bad plays, a couple good plays, but... Seven points. I, I think for what he is, I, I, I think this looks like a quarterback who was from a D2 dra undrafted. Yeah, so, I, I agree. The, my last sort of question is like, um, I wonder how many Bears fans were actually at this game because I think there's an argument that the Chargers almost play 17 away games all year long. And they come through today. They got, they got fans. They got Bears fans in there as well. I don't know if you saw the beginning of the – of the broadcast they're going across the stadium and you got a bears fan cheering and then you got a chargers fan cheering and then you got a guy in a raiders hat <laughs> at the game this yeah. is just the most eclectic crowd uh, I, for an la chargers game but one thing i will say about the chargers i love their shade of blue and how it looks in sofi that i will give them it's okay. like, just like a nice it's easy on the eyes when you watch the chargers play 
good day for light blue in general as we get to other other uniforms. Yeah, the Chargers, I'm looking at them wrap up this game now, seven minutes left. White pants, blue jerseys, little hint of the, the yellow lightning bolts. Very classy. And the Chargers, as many uniforms as they have, they've had a few that were misses. These look good. I mean, stick with these. Yeah, I like I them. I like them. This good one guy who just caught a out route, uh, matching yellow gloves too. <laughs> I, I Looks like good. That. Chargers, they at least look good. <clears throat> All right. Okay, that's a good point to start there. We're gonna we're gonna recap this game uh, in the second segment, but I want to talk our weekends. I want to talk NFL um, as well. I you know I had more time this week to kind of dissect and think of some opening topics about the NFL in general, because it's week eight. The season is now, uh, it, it's in the middle, week eight, 17 weeks. Yeah. And the season is 17 weeks long. I got this concept of something I'm going to call the NFL middle class. We okay. have our elites, which this year are Miami, Kansas City, Philadelphia. We have the low class. Okay. Carolina, uh, on the lower, Houston as well arizona but these nfl middle class teams like new orleans indianapolis um jacksonville you know this is what is gonna is really the only exciting part of the nfl like which middle class teams are gonna snag the wild card spot you know that that was yeah it, it was interesting there there were some teams that kind of like um that you you didn't expect, and all of a sudden they're in the wild card talk, and it, 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 it's they come from both sides. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, San Francisco 49ers are in the wild card spot. Yeah, uh, we took we can safely take them out of the Super Bowl. Okay, mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah, boy, is their stock been down? Yeah, but and the, but that being said, you know, all of a sudden, you know, the 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 Saints are four and four. I mean, that that's just kind of crazy to me how. How did the Saints get four and four? You know, um, uh, it's just that it's it's an interesting. It's shaping up to be a very interesting year. Jacksonville fifth straight win. Jacksonville, uh, maybe the hottest team in the league, arguably. Yeah, very quietly too. I'm watching. I I watched that game, and like there, it's a good game. Pittsburgh is struggling. Jacksonville has a stretch in the third quarter. They're struggling. But then they pull it off and the announcer is like, all right, that's five straight for Jacksonville. I'm like, wait a second. Is Jacksonville really, what are they, five, I have their record here somewhere. Um, have they really rattled off five straight wins? And Easy. they have. It's really, really interesting. Uh, and then we got, you know, the NFL lower class, Jets, Giants, New England, Green Bay. Uh, I think there's no better example of the nfl middle class than minnesota and we'll get into their future now so here's what is what's interesting about week eight if you win week eight <clears throat> now you can start thinking if you're the nfl middle class okay what do i need before the trade deadline what do i need to make this wild card spot how do i bolster my roster if you lose week eight and you're in the middle class you say all right is it time to start thinking about next year <laughs> is it time to tank well it is it time to get you, reps on our, our our young guys? Well, let me ask you this. I mean, what what what? First of all, you mentioned the trade deadline. Can you recall any midseason trades that have really turned someone's season around? Last uh, year, McCaffrey. Well, McCaffrey was that last year? That was two years ago. I thought last it was last year. year. Was it? I don't think so. All right, well, I'm going to need to be double-checked there because I thought that was last year. And um, what was the other one? It was a, There was a QB one a few years ago. Um, there's always a running back one. But, I mean, with the season being as long as it is, like a big trade can really help, can really, really bolster, get that last little piece I, that you need. I mean, I think there were rumors that the Cowboys <laughs> could be going after Derrick Henry. Um, Derek Henry's name was mentioned a lot. Hunter Renfro, yeah, now Hopkins, Hunter Renfro, yep, Hopkins, I mean, uh, Cousins was sh talked about being shopped around this anymore. week, and now it's a total 180 because now they need not a, they just don't have Cousins now, and now they need to start finding someone quick because the guy they put in today, 
<laughs> is not going to be the guy. And the coaching certainly didn't help. We'll get into that game uh, later. So trades like phones are got to be have got to be ringing off the hook all night long tonight. We need to figure out. Okay, we need a guy. Okay, let me get you this guy. All right, we'll we'll dump this this player for a salary cap. We'll go for the draft. It's week eight. That's, it is now the week of the general manager. That's a that's a tough that's a <clears throat> tough proposition I think for GMs and, and VPs because like they're in a position where look they really have to decide how they think the rest of the season is going to go right because right. if you if you think it's going to go south well then you don't you want to protect every freaking asset you have right. And, and you want to obviously you want every asset you can either to wheel and deal. But ultimately, what is it for? Draft picks, draft picks, draft picks. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the NFL is a is a is a league where your your wealth is re really is, uh, it's draft picks. You know, it really is draft picks. Um, and, and people may disagree with that. Um, but let's say you're a team that. And then, you know, then at that point, well, you're, you're not going to really try to win many games if, if you're going to if you're going to throw it in, because that affects, obviously, NFL that, you know, you there is an incentive to tank because of the the draft. Right. Yeah. You know, but what if you're a team that's, you know, four and four like the Saints, you know, I mean, you know, they're four and four and you can always make the argument they could be easily be six and two at this point, you know, but they could oh, yeah. easily be two and six <clears throat> at this point, too. Yeah. You know? Uh, so what do they do? I mean, they're they're on the cusp, and and they're gonna have a, a, a you know they're gonna be in the hunt for the the wild card as as the as the second half of the season opens. So it's it's a real tough call what you yeah. want to do during the trade deadline. But I I just don't know if it's gonna make such a big difference if there's so many guys out there that really really could make a difference on your uh you know on your team. Yeah. Well, I think if you're a team like the Saints, come trade deadline October 31st well I think you got to look at everything that's on the table like who's offering what who wants something from me who's willing to give up I mean it's not just like you making the moves everybody else is making the moves and you can kind of get a lay of the land and see can can we get can we shoot for something one year down the road three years down the road or do we want to go all in on this season Right. You know, the Rams did this. Remember, the Rams did this a couple years ago, getting Stafford, which we really thought like, oh, is this, can Stafford play? Yeah, let's get him in here. Let's bolster him. And they got the Super Bowl. That was a win now situation. And now we're looking at the Rams now and be like, okay, this this might be remodel time. This, we got we got a Super Bowl out of it. And then we had, we hurt the next two years, but we got the Super Bowl. So that was a success, I think you would say. <clears throat> so, um Trade deadline time is the day for the GMs. Interesting, interesting week, week eight in the NFL. The other thing I, the other thought I had, if you're a two and five team after watching today's games, your season is not over. We saw some heavy hitters go down and all of a sudden you can make a run into that division for wild card. Like do not give up two and five teams. Did, did Sean Payton just beat, Patrick Mahomes and Andy <laughs> Reid. <laughs> what? Did, did, that is did, the weirdest game I have watched in a while. Did, did Russell Wilson <clears throat> just walk off the field with Patrick Mahomes as the winning quarterback? <laughs> Although <laughs> apparently Patrick Mahomes did have the flu today. My understanding is he had the flu today. Are we uh, just gonna chalk this up to he had the flu? I, I you have to. There's just he no did other. not. Yeah, he did. He didn't look like regular Mahomes. To me at all. Something was something was weird about that guy. And and man, I saw one play where the Denver receiver is just burning <clears throat> down the sideline. Russell Wilson underthrew him by at least 15 feet. Yeah. It, it, it's kind of <clears throat> hard to watch Russell because I think he's got this like false sense of like that, you know, he, he believes he's like a Hall of Fame quarterback. And you know he did win the Super Bowl. I'm I'm curious to see what your thoughts are on his his a uh, uh, Hall of Fame um, resume. You know I I don't think he's a Hall of Famer. Um, you know is Eli Manning two Super Bowls? Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe? We're we're I I got him in Eli status where we could make arguments for and against. Yeah. So I don't know. I, but I just think <clears throat> I, I think 
that's a, not a very good Broncos team. Although that defense, they didn't look bad. You know, I they, did not. I did like. Wasn't this the defense that got seventy points scored on them, and all of a sudden they're holding the Chiefs to nine points? What is this defense? Blame it on the flu, or maybe he had it's something. The flu, be- it's the flu game, and Patrick Mahomes is not Michael Jordan territory. <clears throat> that was that was nuts, and there was a lot of very unrealistic or unexpected Chief turnovers from Mahomes and special teams as well. All right, before we get to the Sunday night game recap, which, by the way, is not even over yet. There's still two minutes to go. It's 30 to 13. We might see an onside kick on on here. So uh, we're just going to leave it on mute and see how it goes. Sad note this week, this weekend, uh, Matthew Perry passed away. This was one of those passings where you see it on Instagram or you get a text and you're like, what? No. And then you look it up to confirm and you're like, oh shit. Oh. And you just, I, I mean, my reaction was just like instantly saddened because you think of all the troubles he's had. And it right. wasn't like, like we didn't have public, um, public um, problems like, you know, like public drunky, drunkenness, DUIs, police called. Like this was a really sad, quiet, illness to me and it really really like affected me because i'm like i i feel bad for people who suffer with this stuff and the report is no foul play drowned in his jacuzzi so So it could have been it could have been cardiac arrest possibly um i guess so but i mean it it could have been an accidental suicide too we're over o- OD on the pills and then maybe fallen. the pills i know because i think they also said that they did find some pills <laughs> um that may have been prescription pills and you know it, it, it is a very sad story uh obviously matthew perry was one of those actors that i recall from you know we when we were when he was coming up in the 90s you know that's when we were probably seeing beginning to see movies that weren't cartoons anymore right uh, yeah uh, uh and then of course he was on uh friends i got I, I also have to say i was i was not a friends guy ever ever mm-hmm. i think i may have seen a total of five or six episodes and i always thought friends was just real corny um Mm -hmm. you know and i just i just never appreciated the friends humor uh if i was ever watching friends you know growing up it was because i'd be switching the station and then you know you'd see jennifer aniston wearing you know a a, a mini dress or something like that and i'd obviously stop yeah um but other than that i I was never but matthew perry seemed he was seemed like like had a good sense of humor um, I know he struggled and, you know, I, I you know, I, I, I can tell you, obviously, from people who relate, you know, I can relate. Um, but it it is sad. And I, you know, for all all I know, I heard that he was turning his life around. He was really into pickleball. And, you know, 54 years old is still extremely young. So mm-hmm. uh, it, it is it is a sad story. Yeah. And it makes me sad in the second part where, like, I feel like if we could have redone his career, I feel like there was, there was a career after friends from, for him. Like he did a few of the silly romantic comedies where he was just Chandler, just in a movie. But for some reason, I think we always liked him. <laughs> I don't think he was annoying to it. Like, you know, you, you would see Ashton Kutcher in like some rom-com, like we didn't really like him that much. It'd be split. I think we liked him. And friends was just a show that if you liked it or not, you were aware of it. You were yeah, I mean, they, I mean, in you, the zeitgeist, you know, uh, you, you know, the I, characters. Didn't, I didn't particularly watch a whole ton of Matthew Perry uh, movies because um, you know, I was not I again, I was not a rom-com ever been a rom-com kind of guy ever. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, he was obviously good enough that I knew about him. If, if you know, if I if I never really would watch his genres of movies and shows, <clears throat> but I did know who he was. So obviously, yeah, you know, that 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 says something a lot about his talent. Yeah, and it speaks to, you know, the monoculture we had in those days. Everybody watched the same show at the same time on the same day. And right. then we'd all talk about it the next day. It wasn't like, oh, I'll catch it on streaming or I watched it early, I watched it late type of thing. We all knew what was going on there and we kind of followed their lives. And then it would be cool to see what they look like when they would go to the award show and you would see them dressed up, not in their character clothes and you'd be like oh look at that oh look at hey lisa kudrow is actually pretty damn attractive hey look at that you know like we would all react to it and um i thought nbc missed a chance to do a really good tribute tonight 
Um, he was part of NBC's huge heyday in the 90s with the must-see TV. Uh, I thought they should have done something. I really do. I thought there was time to do it. I thought something could have been really tasteful from, from, and from, very from, nice. From the NBC point of view, like this is like one yeah. of our, this is one of our, this is a favorite. colleague. Yeah, I, I thought so. I thought so. This is a huge platform Sunday night programming. Um, I, I mean, I, I mean, watched because, the whole game. I didn't see of, anything. Be, because, because of what, you know, friends and, and Seinfeld did, you know, in those years, I mean, they, they made, they made Thursday night NBC number one, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I thought it was, I thought we were going to see it at some point halftime. I mean, the game's not over, but I, I don't think they have something prepared at this point. There's a minute 50 left. Um, so I, I would have appreciated that. That would have been nice. So somber note, Saturday night into Sunday in the NFL. Um, so, uh, well, let's do a quick break. Coming back, let's talk this Sunday night game. And I just want to get your reaction. Chargers, are they going somewhere after this I, win? I, don't, I, I really I, still don't think so. Let's let's wrap that one up. We I don't think that this game is even worth talking about. <laughs> you know, well, I'll give said, I'll give you the condensed version of my notes then. Yeah, go on ahead. First play from it. scrimmage. Uh, Badgett goes way deep. Completes. The guy falls down. He keeps running. They call him down. I don't think anybody touched him, but they blew the whistle. Then the play goes back that there was a <laughs> there was illegal procedure or something, and then there was a play later in the game where the Bears tight end caught a ball and he's tackled standing up and he keeps his legs going. He breaks out of the tackle and then they blow the whistle. They're like, oh, forward progress. A little quick with the with the whistles. Referee, I thought that was weird. And then kudos to um, Chris Collinsworth for trying his best to keep this keep this game interesting. I really, really appreciate appreciated that. And lastly, Remember two weeks ago when I said Brandon Staley should shave his beard so that he's yeah. not recognizable when he goes in so he won't get fired? He shaved his beard, Omar. Did he take he my did. advice? Do you think he he's did. a listener? It may be, and, and, but it, <laughs> and it looked good. I thought it looked good. <laughs> All right, we're looking at a Bears loss, most likely. Chargers are going to win this game. I thought the Chargers looked good for what it was. I really wish the Raiders played this team. Instead yeah. of instead of the Bears dominant eighty five Bears that killed them this week, so that was a Sunday night game. Game looked good two months ago, no longer is good. So, all right, let's talk the games because there were some good ones today. Although, were. if you looked at the schedule, you would be like, "Which game am I going to watch today?" These don't look. Oh, good. you know, I did say I, I you know, <laughs> I, I I'm not totally down. I wasn't totally down on the Bengals um, uh, this year. Uh, I, I had high hopes. I thought they were going to be a lot better. So I did have, it, I know they were my, they're my team, but I would have had this game on my, you know, interest. Yeah. interest that was the best matchup. You're right. Um, and, and so I, that was the best matchup. And of course, Tony, that was the Tony Romo um, uh, game today. And so, um, you know, he, he, in, uh, just, let's just talk about that game. Yeah. Let's just start there since, he's, you know, he's, He's not very down on Brock Purdy, but I think let's 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 pull the let's put the brakes a little bit on Brock Purdy. I mean, he is our starter. I'm not saying his job is in any sort of jeopardy. Not I mean, not even close. He's still making some some very good plays. Uh, we didn't have Trent Williams today, so that I mean, that's going to hurt pass protection, right? I mean, he, he's, he's Debo he's Samuel out too. Yeah, uh, 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 so yeah, Trent Williams and 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 Debo Samuel out. Let's also just keep in mind it's his tenth game. You know, or twelfth game, a regular season game. So he hasn't even played a full year. You know, compared to a rookie's, you know, uh, a full rookie season. Yeah, uh, so to speak. Yeah, so, the growing pains have been evident the last three weeks. He's got. Yeah, there's uh, going to be growing pains, and and then yeah, but, I'm giving him I'm sad more, purdy face now. I'm more concerned with the defense because that's a talent wise. That's a defense. Uh, that's a defensive squad that's arguably tops in the league. But now it's just they 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 don't seem like they can execute. They don't look like they can tackle. They don't look like they can cover. They don't look like they can uh, cause turnovers. So that's that's where my head's at. I'm more concerned about what's supposed to be the top rated defense in, in in the NFL. On the other side of it, I think we got a totally different Joe Burrow now. 
Joe Burrow is like, there was one play where he ran it for like 20 yards and he's diving head first and he's getting up like yelling and cheering and jumping up and down. Like we didn't see this Joe Burrow the first three weeks. And then yeah. we had this, we had the huge turnaround, which I always think hurts teams more than it lets on is when Purdy threw that weird pick in the red zone where like, I think it was 17 to 10 at the time or something. So they could tie it up, but then they don't get any points. Cincinnati gets the ball. They have the chance. They get points out of it. And essentially you, you lose all this momentum, but there was a really, really close point in the game where since the Cincinnati receiver has the catch fumble, yeah. San Francisco recovers it and then they call it an incomplete. I, I don't know. I thought that was a catch. I thought that the was, football that, move that was, was very he brought it in. That was very close. I after I saw it, it you could you could definitely make the argument both ways, but that's why I thought that because it was called a fumble on the field, I didn't see enough to overturn it. So that's why I thought it was gonna I was surprised by the call uh the the ultimate ruling because I, I didn't think but then because but that being said had they ruled it an incomplete pass I would have gone with the call on the field as mm. being an incomplete pass <laughs> right <laughs> right yeah luckily it wasn't like you know the turning point of the game although momentum wise it could have been but like that that might have been our first catch debate of the year I can't remember another one at the moment I thought it was a catch and fumble I thought I thought San Francisco had a chance to get that ball right back to it. And then Purdy had that weird interception where he didn't see the guy. It goes into my category of like he didn't see the guy. Threw it right to the linebacker. Killed more momentum. Sad Purdy came out. Um, so, oh, and then the, the end of the game ended weird. Purdy throws an interception. It gets called back because of a late hit, which his head got slammed pretty hard on. And he grabs the head like we saw Tua do last year. And in the next play, he gets strip sacked. So health-wise, Purdy, now we have to ask, because he was in concussion protocol this week. We didn't know if he was going to play. He does play. He has a bad game. And then we had this really unnecessary end to the game, too, where he got tackled and he slammed his head in the back of it, too. Right. Um, so uh, what's the concern level for San Francisco moving forward? I mean, I still think we're obviously a playoff team. I'm not, you're, you're not going to talk, you know, talent wise, but we're obviously not <laughs> playing up to our talent. Um, and and I'm, I'm looking at the defense. Yeah. A couple of drop balls to hurt Purdy. The defense to get to have 31 points put up on you on defense, uh, I think is a question mark. I don't know enough to know what happened there, but I'm mean, Cincinnati brought it today. Every catch was seven more yards of running. Every screen pass was like, oh, shoot, they called it at the right time. And then Burrow would did that great play where they thought he was throwing the screen, and then he goes to the corner of the end zone and got that touchdown as well. So three straight losses for San Francisco, three straight wins for Cincinnati. And then one last note on the comedy side. They showed Debo Samuel on the sideline. And he, was, he had this bag of something, and he, like, tips it up. He was eating something on the sidelines man we have come a long way from mark sanchez sneaking a hot dog haven't we we really have because he just he's just casually eating something like i mean what a great sunday get to get some food watch the game from the sideline <laughs> i want to know what he was eating it looked like candy or something yeah i i don't know but yeah, that that you, you can't eat anything these days these cameras are so good <laughs> but there was no like like, uh, oh, what's he eating there? Or like, is I don't think we're going to have memes about it. Like, he didn't try and hide it at all, like Mark Sanchez did with the hot dog. Just Debo Sanchez like, oh, let me grab something to eat here while I watch this game from the sideline. That'll be pretty fun. Right. So you still think playoff team, but there's got to be concern. Like, do you think, are you worried about Purdy? I mean, we are, I mean, we saw Badgett do it tonight. Like, the stock has gone down. Maybe the stock is going down on Purdy now. I, I think so. Uh, again, it's it's there is there is some concern. You've lost three games in a row, but uh, it's not uh, over. It's just it's just going to be some coaching and some adjustments. But again, like I said, I'm more concerned about the defense. I thought McCaffrey started strong. 
at least oh, the first always, half I mean, of the game too. It, I mean, that, that's the thing. We, we can't asset. say it's talent. It's it's not it's not talent with the 49ers. Yeah, I don't know it, what it, happened it, in this game. It, well, what's happened in the last three games? We're talking about a, almost True. a month of bad football. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so, you know, it's just some changes have to be made. You think there? Um, do you think uh, a trade is out there that? No, I don't help? think because so. it doesn't seem like they're missing anything per se. It seems like they are just hit this bad stretch of poor execution. Right. So no, I don't think it's a trade. I mean, they they have the talent. And those three losses, there was a missed field goal in there where could have went either way. Uh, so tough stretch. But again, it's week eight. This is the turning point. This is yeah. middle class to upper class NFL. All right, let's go to the early games. L.A. Rams at the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys wore their their dark uniforms. It confused me where they were for half the game. Right. I was curious about that, too. Yeah, I was like, oh, are they playing in L.A.? But I thought the chart... Oh, they're in Dallas. Oh, they're wearing... Okay, I got it. I feel like Dallas has been bouncing back from that 49er loss for the last three weeks. And I think they're finally back now. Dak looked good, although he gave the Rams a little sliver of a chance with that weird interception. But four touchdowns, he's running all over the place. Uh, Dallas defense is sacking Stafford. Uh, Great, like, if Dallas had to put together a recruiting film, this is the game you would use. They even blocked a punt, too. So, the great, great game for Dallas all the way around. I think they're officially have bounced back now and Stafford gets injured at the end of this game yep. as well. Add it to the list of QBs who are injured. So Dallas, a threat. Yes or no Rams out. Yes. Uh, or no. I, I think I, you know, that's another team that they've had <laughs> games of good football and then they've, they've thrown up some stinkers, uh, but you know, they are teetering towards the outs. Uh, Cowboys are definitely looking a lot better than they are. Seahawks looking a lot better than the Rams are. Yeah, Seahawks was a was a weird one. Another game where Geno is going to give you a chance. <laughs> you right. know? So Philly next week for Dallas. Big test there. That's a big game. Can't wait to watch that one. Uh, next game, NFC North. Minnesota goes to Green Bay. My note is... <laughs> Green Bay's offense is bad. (laughs) Oh, man. I don't think they had any first downs for like a couple hours into this game. Jordan Love's body language is bad. How about, about, you know, and it kind of gives you an idea of maybe Aaron Rodgers wasn't so crazy being really upset with the Packers. They obviously just were not building on offense uh, around, around Aaron Rodgers. I can't believe you just said that, <laughs> you know, that is, that is quite the turn. What happened to Aaron Jones? Is he still on this team? Didn't they used to have but a good again, running team? You know, you, it's so, it's so unfair, Patrick, I think with the running backs, they're, 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 they're just not going to five years. Is yeah. just too, five years is too long now, you know? Yeah. Good point. If you get three out of a running back, which makes me think Aaron Jones's name is going to be floated somewhere out there. Yeah. You know, in trade talks. Because it, it might be time to it, it, it might be Patrick, time to tank for Green Bay. Here's the problem. It's so unfair to running backs because they need the rock in order to get paid, right? They're mm-hmm. they're not gonna get paid to block. Okay. Running backs are paid to carry the you know, carry the tote, uh, you know, get in the end zone and, and maybe catch a few balls. Break a few tackles. Yes, blocking's nice, but let's let's it's about numbers, right? I mean, that's that's mm-hmm. where you get your money. <clears throat> and so, but it's hard because the more they get the rock, well, that's more wear and tear on their bodies, and yeah. that's that's crippling their market, you know. Yeah. Value. And, and it's so, almost like anything can can take them down. A toe. A toe. Yeah. How many times yeah. have we seen a toe a or foot toe. thing? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, Liz Franks. And, and and so, and the problem is, then it's like, you know, you felt bad for all these running backs that weren't getting paid in the offseason. You know, there was a lot of, a lot being made about those running backs that were just not given a payday. You know, Jonathan Taylor, you know, there were, there were a few out there. Um, but then it's like, you look on the teams from the team's perspective, it's like, yeah, what exactly are you paying for? You know, it's like, I, I, I'd love to give you all this money, but all this money, you know, maybe I have you for two solid years, you know, three yeah. years, you know? 
Yeah, yeah. We got hard. a they got a salary cap to consider, and and uh, as so many teams can have two running backs to share the job. We saw this with Ezekiel Elliott and Pollard last year. Yeah, and then they trade away Zeke Elliott. Other couple notes on Green Bay: they had no first downs, and it became really sad because the Lambeau fans started booing them. There was a fourth and 16 where Jordan Love, the rushing three, he's looking, he's looking, there's a huge hole. He runs it for 15 yards and gets tackled. <laughs> and they turn the ball over on downs. He, it's not like he, he didn't try to make a move to get the last yard. He just put his head down and the linebacker just wrapped him up. <laughs> and he was like, that's it. Like didn't even, didn't reach out the ball or anything like that. Other note, Minnesota has the classic, I'm a good, bad team. We Somehow we win games, but they have no scoring drives on their first drive of any game. The stat came out today. So we have that going for, for, the, for the Vikings. Both coaches, I don't know if you noticed this, were wearing vests. Interesting yeah. attire, like the long sleeve sweatshirt, but a vest over the top. And then, okay, the Cousins injury, non-contact, tore the, tore the ACL, was it? And, and they're done. Patrick, they're done. They're, He's done. Their season's done. It's looking, unless they can get some miracle no. quarterback no. to come in. I, I, <clears throat> that's so hard because, look, Cousins had... Well, Cousins was that team, yeah. Arguably at this point, regardless of their record, they may have the best one-two wide receivers punch in the league, okay, mm -hmm. in Jefferson and Addison. So, you know, and, and that's that's with quarterbacking, that's timing, that's everything. Yeah. I think to put a quarterback in there right now, midseason, at the halfway point, there's just not going to be the same production. Yeah. Uh, well, we, we got into this discussion weeks before with quarterbacks. When your starter goes down, it's not like the second stringer comes in and is just a little bit worse than that. Like these second stringers are all rookies. They don't have a grasp. I, I think the NFL's teams do this because they don't want to pay uh pay them out to have a second string quarterback sit. So they wanna they don't want to use the cap space. But when the first stringer goes down, now they're scrambling like, all right, who can we get? I heard Tannehill's name thrown out there i heard case keenum's name thrown out there but now you have to get them you have to actually so they're just carrying these kind these quarterbacks on the bench to just come in <laughs> for nothing so i so i don't know what the thinking is here because that quarterback goes in they're up i think 17 points or maybe two two scores green bay's offense has done nothing so oh, the announcer okay. says all right look, we'll just hand the ball off the defense is playing good. Hand the ball off. And what does Minnesota do? What does Kevin O'Connell do? He's calling these ridiculous pass plays. And the guy's getting balls tipped. He's getting sacked. They're incomplete. He's like, what are, what are you doing? Just run the ball. Go three it out. Who cares? So Minnesota gave them a chance to get in there. But um, Green Bay had no offense. They couldn't do anything with it. And now they got to find a quarterback if it's if anything is going to come to the season cuz Minnesota was Kirk Cousins. That was that was a Kirk Cousins team all the way through. So it's it's a bummer to see that his season is over like that. Maybe more vests. <laughs> There's there is something about Jordan Love though. Like the good highlights he has like you're like, oh, this guy's a talent, but he missed some. He missed two wide open deep throws in this yeah. game that would have that would have made it a good game. So Minnesota wins. Green Bay loses twenty four to ten, and now Minnesota has to figure out a quarterback moving forward. Okay, two perfect NFL middle class games. Omar, Atlanta at Tennessee and New Orleans at Indianapolis. Two two games are gonna be like, all right. <laughs> These teams are not good and they're not bad. Maybe I'll I watch think, it. Maybe I'll I didn't think we were going to talk about it, but hey, Will Levis, uh, do we do we have a, the 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 birth <clears throat> of a superstar? Oh, uh, you like him, but the, the, Patrick, he, the the guy he's playing for the Tennessee Titans. You know, and it, when we were talking NFL map, they uh, Tennessee takes Kentucky. You know, uh, <laughs> so so we're talking. You know, he's he, the kid's from out there. He's got a good following out there. 
and 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 it just looks like wow, four touchdowns in a debut. Tannehill went into today's game with two touchdowns. So <laughs> Uh, it looks like we may have uh, 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 the rise of a superstar here. Look good in those Oilers uniforms. I remember those Oilers uniforms being like that shade of blue. Maybe it's the HD TVs. Maybe they give a little extra ink in there, but God damn, those uniforms look good. Keep those uniforms, I say. Yeah. I'm willing to just call them the Houston Oilers as well. Yeah, I liked it. I like a little midseason quarterback discovery as well. I liken these this Atlanta Tennessee game, New Orleans and in Indianapolis game, to a bad reality TV show that maybe you just love. You're like this TV show's bad, but I'm gonna watch the challenge. I just like right. it, and that's kind of what these teams are. Is just you know a, a TV show buried in deep cable, but you like it. You're like let's check it out. You know I'll keep I'm gonna turn it on while I while I wash the dishes and catch it. So Tennessee wins, Atlanta loses again, more Desmond Ritter bad play <laughs> happening. And in New Orleans, Indianapolis, 38-27, big points in this game. New Orleans somehow was hanging around all season long, and in Indianapolis loses the Minshew. <laughs> Minshew's only good when he comes on in relief. Right. I think he can't start. He's a, he's a reliever, and that's it. So any reason to believe in Tennessee or New Orleans? No, I, I don't, don't think so. I don't think so either, but I, I, I think New Orleans is going to win that division though. Don't you? They could. They I could think they're going to win it. All right. Uh, not a weird one, but I think this it draw, has to have our attention. New England into Miami, goes into Miami. They lose 31 to 17. That, that, that Miami offense, they're, 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 they're still talented. I know, yeah. I know Philadelphia took care of business last <laughs> week with them. But that Miami offense is still very fast. They have a lot of playmakers on that team. Yeah, good bounce back by Miami. Really strong back. to see how a team reacts after a loss. Especially in a division game, for sure. Yeah, and New England gave them a bit of a game for two and a half quarters. Right. But I, I don't feel like you ever, you ever thought New England was going to make a run and get the lead. No. So big flex by Miami there. Okay, this was a weird game. I don't know if it was worthy. This was my, I'll just refresh the ESPN app and keep it, keep an eye on the score because it's interesting. The battle of New York, the New York Jets versus the New York Giants. This used to be a hollow sacred game, Omar. And now it's turned into, all right, let's see. Let's see who fucks up less in this game. It's like an entire city was disappointed today. <laughs> You know it's bad when there's a lot of attention paid to Aaron Rodgers warming up in his sweatpants. Like right. he warms up like he's gonna play, and like I, I like watching him throw. He warms up in the pregame these days, and I thought this was the chance to implement the all-time QB. Let's have Aaron Rodgers just throw passes for both teams, and let's just have fun. With, let's just play seven on seven. Yeah, for this game, uh, that'll be was, fun. It just seemed like, but hey, I, I got excited when he came out. Uh, cause then he ran a touchdown. Uh, I was, I was getting excited about the giants getting a quarterback named Tommy DeVito. Yeah. I I'm with you. Like, let's like, I wish he was better. Did you see he threw one pass in the whole second half? It was all runs. He threw one pass in the second his, half. His passing line was two for seven with <laughs> minus one yard. <laughs> that's like a, that's like a stat of one of those Texas wishbone high schools from the eighties that never passes. They only run the ball. <laughs> right like like there's like they have like a uh a, a 23 different option plays <laughs> right their one pass play is a screen and then when the the quarterback throws it and it's not perfect the coach yells at him for throwing the ball like eight, what are you eight doing different, eight different traps nine different sweeps <laughs> a real student body uh, left a, a very a very right. uh army navy football game army navy yeah would be it would be a good one as well. I'm with you. Can you imagine if he was good and we had this Italian guy, Italian last name guy in New York playing well? Like this could be a story, but look. Tommy D. Tommy D. I mean, Tommy that, D. I, 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 I mean, hopefully, I mean, maybe he's, do you think maybe, uh, I, I saw that they had him listed as a right, as a righty. Do you think maybe he's a lefty? <laughs> <laughs> it was that bad. Do you think he might be left-handed? Maybe. Hey, why not? 
hey, yo, DeVito. Like, we could have guys yelling that from the tunnel. You know, like, yeah. uh, this would be a great story if he was good. Hey, imagine how many New York delis would have a sandwich named after him, the Tommy yeah. Duke. Yeah, we could have a section of the crowd that dresses up like um, characters from The Sopranos, you know, and it, right. could, it could be like DeVito's crew or like, uh, or we could call it like DeVito's Mafia or something. Like, remember when uh, Franco Harris had the Franco Italian army? Right. You know, get this going. Get this New going. New York, New York needs that superstar. Patrick. Ah, they, they you know, and that's why they, one day maybe they just, you know, they just need to tank a, <clears throat> I still swear that somebody has to just tank two seasons to get Arch Manning. Uh, <laughs> just, just lose every single game for two straight years. Uh, year number one uh, to get this year's number one pick. You, you, you select the top left tackle in the league uh, in the draft. Uh, you let him uh, uh, work for a year, and then next thing you know, you have a, a solid superstar that's protecting your franchise quarterback in Arch yeah. Manning. But the Giants have to make that happen. The Patriots have to make that happen. Yeah. You know, I was thinking there's no real concept of playing small ball in the NFL, but maybe that's the call. It's like, all right, let's get the left tackle. And this first year, don't worry about it. You, I mean, like, we'll take you out in the fourth quarter of all these games. So you don't have to worry about getting injured. And then the next year we get the franchise QB. You know, that's our small ball is let's play for next year type of thing. There was a point in the game where the Giants crowd started chanting, let him throw, let him throw. <laughs> it was great. And then they go into overtime of all things. Giants get the ball. And what do you think the first three play calls are from the Giants? Passes. Passes right. behind the line of scrimmage. And they lost two yards. He threw a pass for minus two yards. They punted the ball. And then the Jets got the ball and got a field goal. And they won the game. <laughs> completely nuts that was extremely questionable yeah very very questionable and it led me to realize here might be my new favorite nfl conundrum is they bring the two captains to the 50 yard line to do the overtime coin toss and he goes gentlemen this is the coin this is heads this is tails uh we will play in overtime first team to score a touchdown wins if there's a field goal they will get a you will get a possession any questions? Has anybody ever asked any questions when they say that? He'd be like, no. uh, yes, ref, I got a question. What happens if the, if I call a timeout? Like, I would love a, a player to be like, question. I would love to see that one day. It could happen. I would love it. I would love it. The Jets win somehow. Okay, Jacksonville, Pittsburgh. We talked about it. Jacksonville's won five straight. Jacksonville, it was raining. Jacksonville wore green pants. I like <laughs> hey, that. I really like that ETN. He's good. Oh, they're He's strong. Good. This was surprisingly a good game on paper. Five and two versus four and two. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think that definitely the Jacksonville Jaguars are going places. Right now, I think arguably they're the hottest team in the league. Right you think now. so? I th Right now, they're the hottest team in the league. Um, and so uh, they're, they're, they're playing some good football at the right time. And I think right now that division is definitely theirs for the taking. And uh, Pittsburgh didn't do themselves any favors. No. As, as well. The quarterback oh, hey, got injured. Hey, hey. Trubisky's bad. Tr Tr I, I have a new name for Trubisky. It's called Trubisky underneath. The guy just throws it underneath all the time. And when he throws it deep, it gets picked off. So he just throws it underneath all the time. Really bad, weird end to the first half for Pittsburgh. They have they they kick a field goal. It gets called back due to a penalty. Then the field goal is no good. Um, and they just kind of go in bummed out. And also, you know what's weird about the kicker Boswell is named for Pittsburgh. He wears his pants like they're shorts. Like he hikes them up. <laughs> he's right. wearing hot, he's wearing hot pants out there kicking field goals. That was an odd end. And Kenny Pickett gets injured, shoulder injury. It looked bad. So now Pittsburgh is is in is in yeah, a lot you know, of trouble. Something tells me there's something going on with that offense and that offensive coordinator and the quarterback and Tomlin. That's something to look out for. I think they they seem dysfunctional on mm. offense. You think so? Because we've given Tomlin a long leash over the years. There was two bad Roethlisberger years 
Were they just yeah, let them out but, there you know, and now these have been that, bad years? But that's the Steelers way. I mean, you know, in our lifetimes, I think, yeah, we were we were alive when Chuck Noll coached. And they've only had in our lifetime, Chuck Noll, Bill Cower, Mike Tomlin. Yeah, maybe you're right. It's It's got to be Tomlin says, I'm retiring. It's never going to be Tomlin is out. So... Yeah, maybe you're right. Pittsburgh just just struggles. They I don't know how they're four and two, but they they have no offense. Their defense comes through every now and again. They 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 like I said, Jacksonville gave them chances in the third quarter by their offense going to sleep, and then Jacksonville had the <laughs> had the classic where they fumble the ball on one of those a pretty common play where the quarterback fakes the handoff and then pitches it. Every team has this play. He pitches it. The, the running back gets it. He fumbles. And the announcer goes, yeah, they tried to get too cute. <laughs> like, every team runs this play. Why is this the go-to, the go-to reaction when somebody fumbles? You have to say they try to get too cute. <laughs> we, need a new, we need a new reaction, announcers. Come on. Get better with that. Another right. early game. Philly at Washington. Philly wins. Um, oh, the Washington made it a game. They, they made, made a game. They did. Philly seven and one. That that AJ Brown man does he like? Does he love to go after the football? Yeah, yeah. I somehow I, I Jalen Hurts puts up these 50-50 balls, and they always come down with them. Right. And then uh, Washington had I think my new I. What do you think about this? The hardest play in the NFL is the onside kick. And Washington attempted one. The NFL is. Oh, all teams this year, onside kicks, one for 16 until later that afternoon when, who played Baltimore? When Arizona successfully got an onside kick, they got a field goal out of it and then tried another onside kick and then they didn't get that one. But the onside kick is just so impossible. You got to get a bounce. You got to hope someone fumbles it. I love watching an onside kick. We can talk about that. Cardinals, not, not, not good. Yeah, let's go to Card. Okay, Cardinals are not good. What's going on with them? Because I, I wrote down in my notes the Cardinals are one and six, but after but while watching this game, you would say, Omar, they have all the fight of a two and five. Oh, team. they're they're they're, they're scrappy. <laughs> uh, they're scrappy. They're, they really should be two and five. <laughs> they really but, should be. But, uh, you know, obviously they're they're gonna have some huge decisions to make in, in, with their quarterback. Um, How long know, is Kyler Murray gonna hold this carrot? over our heads i, I mean that's like is man. he coming back is he not like i think I, I, I really i when he comes back and i think he can come back what next week um i heard next week was possibility too yeah next but week i think we heard that for the last two weeks though but so if he comes back honestly patrick i think this is his last chance in arizona yeah I, I, for sure he'll get he'll get another chance somewhere <laughs> else he, I, I think he's that talented Mm-hmm. But as far as being Arizona's quarterback, I think this is his last chance. Yeah, I I think so. And Dobbs is not bad. He's not good, oh. but he's not bad. Like he has, he's there's very feisty. I told you they they play like they're two and five, not one and six. There, but Lamar and the and the Ravens, uh, they gave them chances. They were in yeah, this game yeah, a little and then, bit. And then sometimes Lamar doesn't look that great, you know. There was a play where Lamar basically let himself get sacked. I think he saw the defender running up to him and he just stood there and let him get himself get tackled. That was very that was very strange as well. I couldn't quite I couldn't un- understand that. I also couldn't understand Arizona's uniforms. <laughs> they they have uniforms and on the front it says Arizona. <laughs> like we know who you right. are. Interesting. Arizona's just a fun a fun team to watch. I'm going to give them that. Baltimore wins. Um, oh, you know, this was last note on Arizona. We talked about the Philly push play last week, how they do this every third and two, every fourth and one Arizona had a weird push play where they throw it to the tight end. He catches it on about the three, all the Ravens gather a gang up on him. They start moving him backwards. All the Arizona teammates run up, they gang up on him. They start moving him forward. This play lasted 12 seconds. Catch him, uh, tackle, push him back. They reinforce, push him back. He scored a touchdown on it. (laughs) He scored a touchdown. It was really, really fun. Like, is this play legal or not? 
Apparently it is. Apparently it is. That was the ultimate push play. All right, it's time. You want to talk Seattle or do you want to talk KC Denver? We already talked we talked KC Denver. Uh Taylor Swift <laughs> needs to be in the in the in the in the press box in order for KC to oh. move. Remember, we gave them a pass. Patrick Mahomes had the flu, so that, that's all we need to talk about. Also, what happened to the snow? I saw pictures this morning. Like, look at the snow in Denver, and there was no snow. The sun was out. It really teased me with that. I want to see a snow game. That was that was one of the oddest games. Even though Russell Wilson had the three touchdowns, he still find found a way. <laughs> he found a way to fumble at the end of the first half, and then Casey got a field goal out of it. I was like, oh, here we go. Casey's gonna steal it like they always do, and then um, somehow Denver blocked. A field goal as well i couldn't okay. figure this this game out at all here's the smartest play russell wilson had <laughs> they're up by like 14 points or something and he's running around and he slides to lose two yards and keep the clock running i was like all right russell wilson smart play yeah i'll give you that i'll give he's you that a he's a vet yeah mahomes had the flu he had he probably had strep or laryngitis or something. It was got because he was he was not Mahomes. Yeah. Like as all right, Cleveland, Seattle. Seattle 24. I mean, they played Seattle. Seattle won again. Uh Cleveland, you know, that they, they, they did they did not look like the team that beat the 49ers. You know what I mean? Um still uh, no Deshaun. Still, and you know, uh, there, there, there's if he doesn't play next week, it's time to ask some serious questions. He's another one where I'm like, are you injured or not? Like, are you just going to go on the sidelines on the, are you just going to have season tickets to the Cleveland Browns? What would you, if you are the owner of the Texans and he, you know, you sit him down to Sean, what's going on? You're not yourself. Is there anything we can do as an organization moving forward? And he says, look, uh, 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 sir, I put up my best numbers when I was getting massages. So. Oh, Texans. Like you want him to come back? I'm sorry, Cleveland. not Cleveland. No, but he, I mean, I'm sorry, the owner of the Browns. Cleveland, he, he yeah, can yeah. Say, he can say that, oh, I had my best years as, as a Texan when I was getting massages. <laughs> what do you do then? Yeah, what do you do? We, you give we him his find, massages? I don't think he's allowed to. Well, what if we find m- masseuses who consent to the massages he wants? You know, what if we find that one? I think that might be an answer to consider. Doesn't seem like he really is that interested in playing, to be honest. Right. You know, <laughs> he's just on the sideline hanging out. I don't know if he has a headset or not, but same thing like Kyler Murray, like the announcer just dangle him in front of us all game long. Like, is Deshaun, Deshaun coming back? Oh, he might come back. We'll check with him. And I don't think he's got, if you were to say, put money on if Deshaun's coming back next week, I probably would say no. <laughs> I probably would say no. He's going to be on the sideline again. It's going to be this JP guy I, I, again. I think, I think his time is definitely limited. Uh, uh, maybe coming to an end in Cleveland. Looks like that honeymoon oh. uh, was over real fast. It, that would be the fastest honeymoon ever. He played a quarter of the season. And then what about Gino? I wrote in my notes, Gino would be a completely capable game manager if the offense didn't call place for him to throw it down the field. Right. He always has a ball tipped that gets intercepted. And then he'll have a great pass 20 yards down the field into the corner of the end zone. And then he'll have a great run to it. I think he can be managed as long as the play calls are correct. Because he had like four or five bonehead plays in this game. And he had four or five great plays in this game. Uh, And in my last note, is Seattle really six and two? Yeah. (laughs) I saw that on the the standings. I was like, I don't think that's right. But that's right. They're six and two. They're six and two. All right, unbelievable. How about the uniforms on Seattle this week? Superb. I loved it. We went to the Steve Largent era, Seattle. I would I I think at some point they'll come back. They look great. That seafoam green with a shiny silver helmet. We need to get the Tennessee Titans in the Oilers uniforms to play the Seattle Seahawks in these Steve Largent uniforms. Yep. How great How great would that be? We bring in the old guys. We bring in Warren Moon in the luxury box. We bring in some Jim Zorn 
or some uh, Steve Largent in there in the luxury box, like a real throwback game. I like That's, it. I would totally go for that. All right. Did we hit all the games? We did. All right. That brings us to, I mentioned that it's NFL trade deadline time. So I got a fun little game. I'm going to play with you three teams that I feel are on the brink. And this game is called switch QBs with me. Okay. Three teams. I'm going to throw the team out there and I want you to pick a team that you would switch QBs for straight up. Let's just trade QBs because these are teams where I'm not fully sure about the QB, despite that these are good teams. So first team switch QBs with me, Philadelphia Eagles and Jalen hurts. Are we convinced this guy is elite? He's elite. I, I think there's elite plays, but he's somehow elite. he's elite. Okay. Switch, he's elite. Q, switch QBs with me, Omar. What team would you want to just straight up swap QBs for from Philly? Say you had to insert a QB and we don't miss a beat with these, with this Philly offense. Oh, you'd want, you'd want Pat, you'd want, you'd want Mahomes. Just straight up switch Mahomes for him? Straight up. And, and, and that, that, that'd be a killer off. Well, you, you put Devontae Smith and, and, and AJ Brown on the side of, of Mahomes. Uh, that, that, that'd be something else. Yeah. It'd be Mahomes. All right. Okay. I'm going to throw out a middle, a middle, uh, class QB to you. And I want to see if you think the Eagles will be better or worse with this QB. So switch QBs, change Jalen hurts and give me, well, it was going to be before today, but Kirk cousins. Uh, I think Kirk cousins would, 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 would be, um, not not as good as Jalen Hurts because of the athleticism Jalen Jalen Hurts brings. But couldn't I, do the I, couldn't do the push play. N- no, um, and I don't uh, think Mahomes could do the and, push and play. And I, I got I got a I got a hot take. Remind me about my hot take. Um, right. uh, uh, that it has to do with the push play, Patrick. The push play. Um, but no. Uh, but I think <laughs> Kirk Cousins would be successful in Philadelphia. Yes, but okay. not as. All right, next team, switch QBs with Cincinnati Bengals. I got one. Switch QBs, take out Joe Burrow, insert Dak Prescott. What do you think that offense looks like? Dak still the liability. I, I think you'd have an angry Jamar Chase. Uh, I think you'd have mm. a, a, a an angry uh, Tyler Boyd and... And 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 T Higgins, I, I do not think they're, they they would like themselves uh, uh, Dak Prescott. But hey, that, I mean, they, you know, Joe Mixon's a, a quality running back. They, I mean, they definitely have the the pieces. Um, but obviously, I, I I you know I still would it would be Dak Prescott as the would be the person responsible for them not being successful. Mm, so net negative, you would say if you were. I mean, today Joe Burrow looked like. I mean, an MVP candidate. So anything would be negative compared to today. Any other quarterbacks you think you would switch Joe Burrow for? Uh, I, I could see being successful. Oh yeah, uh, give put put Tua with with those with with Jamar mm. uh, with, with Jamar uh, and and Tyler and uh, that that that'd be something special. All right, last team. Switch quarterbacks with Justin Herbert. My <laughs> thought or my curiosity is if we put Trevor Lawrence on this Chargers team. Ooh, with Keenan Allen. Is he better or worse? Herbert was good today. That I that question marks around Bears defense. But Herbert has been prone to injuries this year. His fingers jacked up. I haven't seen the elite decision making you know the thing about this sunday night game it's so painful to watch the score but i just want to see herbert throw the ball yeah he throws the ball like the spiral is so tight but if we put trevor lawrence in there we just straight up swap yeah, i think i think i think that'd be an upgrade for her. yeah and what if herbert goes to the jags what do you think about that like that would be fun too a that few weapons work. a runner a guy who can run hand off the ball and run take a little pressure off i think I think that would be an interesting one because that could work. 
I think we're at a crossroads with Herbert. Is like he's what he's got one more coach in him because after they get rid of Staley, once they figure out he shaved his beard, they're gonna give him another shot with another coach, and they got to produce something. They got to get up, get in the playoffs. It's year four already. Yeah, they they got to do something. All right, that was switch quarterbacks with. Uh, game this week because it was week eight the trade deadline is here i'm curious to see what the biggest movers and shakers are going to be this week that brings us to the awards omar for week eight. First award best quote i got two nominees first nominee this is from the jets radio announcer when the jets kicked the winning field goal in overtime and the quote is the jets win in overtime I'm not sure how <laughs> was the quote. And in my second nominee, did you catch the part? Oh, you didn't. You didn't watch the Sunday night game. At some point, <laughs> Badgett throws a deep ball, wide open Bears receiver. And he was so open that he falls down and the ball hits him and he drops it. <laughs> and Collinsworth goes, uh we still got that Monty Python video. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll second that award. Uh, I didn't. It hear was. It, it was like five seconds of. Uh, 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 oh my! Oh my! I don't know, Mike. These guys. Oh, Justin Herbert, Mike. <laughs> God I'll, bless his go I want to go with that one. I like that one. I like that one. All right. Do you have a best quote or do you like? Uh, right, I'll second yours. All right. Hot take award. All right. You seem chomping at the bit. So I'm going to give you the, the lead on this one. I'm Jason Kelsey. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am not going to another practice. I am not going to take it. I'm not going to snap another ball until I am the highest paid player in the entire league. Wow, mid-season? You want to renegotiate Mid mid-season? What they're doing to that <laughs> poor guy with that with that push, push <laughs> that brotherly shove. Yeah. He is getting his ass kicked. Like I think <laughs> they it run it taking, four times a game. It, it, it is taking it is taking years off his life's expectancy at this point. <laughs> so I it is not worth dying for unless you're going to be the highest paid player in the NFL. Yeah, we're going to find they, out. And, they like, seem, and the Eagles seem to want to write that play into a Super Bowl. Also, there was that play when when uh, Jalen Hurts did fumble a tush push, and it seemed like it was it was on the exchange, wasn't it? Today, it, there there was a fumble, oh really? I didn't see that. Was, there was a fumble on the tush push, um, and the red the Commanders did recover it, but it was so sad. It's like they lose the ball and like they're all the players are getting up. The commanders are celebrating. The the Eagles are taking off their helmets. Jason Kelsey's still on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just total like D-Day Beach of Normandy. Like, man down, man down, leave him, leave him, keep pushing. He's gonna have some weird injury that we've like never heard of. But like, remember like fullbacks when back when we had fullbacks always had like neck compressions and slip disc discs on top of discs just from weight being placed on them. He's gonna that, get something. That that's my hot. He should not. He his agent needs to call timeout on the season mid season. I I don't disagree. <laughs> that play is dangerous. <laughs> It's going to be one of those plays in 20 years where we say like, oh, you should have seen what a QB sneak was in our day. And we're going to refer to that and people are going to just think it's complete chaos. Patrick, that's why years. in rugby, when they have those scrums, they already, they, they, they start them in the locked position mm. because, you know, because it's too violent for you to go head first and like that with other people. <laughs> This is also one of those things where we're going to say, like, can you believe what we used to do? <laughs> yeah. Can you believe what, what we thought was like regular sports? What we thought was a good sports play <laughs> is the, the tush push where we just all got in a crowd and just smashed each other. Somehow Philly is the only one who's like really good at it. Like other teams try it. They're not as good as Philly at it. Oh my God. Yeah, crazy. Isn't that crazy how the NFL works? You know, 
you know, back in the in the late '90s, it was the Vikings uh, offense, the the Rams, the greatest show on turf. Uh, you know, big big points. Um, you know, big scoring games when when Manning was quarterbacking the uh, the Broncos uh, and the Colts. They you know these big offenses, and now like we've gone back to like 1910 where the biggest, most effective play we're talking about in 2023 is a play that's designed to get you one yard. <laughs> <laughs> I know we need a new term for a three, three yards and a cloud of dust. Right. This, this is, you know, two and a half feet and a cloud of like human, <laughs> human remains <laughs> next award. Oh no, I didn't do my hot take hot take award. Okay, I mentioned that I think Mahomes had more than the flu today. I think we're going to find out he has something really, like, more than just the flu. And I say he sits out next week. I say he was really sick today. Traveled, cold oh, temperature. No. Ooh, he'll be He's... fine. He'll be fine by practice. Well, I'm saying he has something more than the flu is what we're going to find oh, out. Nah. And whatever he had, oh, maybe it got saying. worse because nah. of today. And I say he sits out next week. Uh, next award, best innovation award. You know what I went with? I don't know if I mentioned it before. I went with the little fold up medical tent as the best innovation because That's remember, when, isn't it? yeah, remember when someone used to get hurt and we used to just watch them get their ankle taped and they'd be screaming in pain right. <laughs> on the sideline and we would just all get to see it from right. the press. Like whatever happened to the HIPAA laws? Like, is there any privacy for, for medicine, for doctors? Prescribing so the medical tent, good innovation, which makes me think we still need a porta potty out there. We need a bathroom. So, and so that's what that I was thinking the other day. Wouldn't that be something so, similar that you you see the toilets like just they're just sitting there, but but then when it's time to use it, you got a guy that just comes in and just <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, just a toilet, <laughs> just exposed, and then the tent goes oh, yeah, up. But then what happens? What happens if you clog the toilet? What do you tell that guy? Like, hey, you leave the tent up. <laughs> right. Oh, at some point we see someone come out of the the bathroom tent, and uh, he really bombed it. So he's opening and closing the tent fast to get a little bit of airflow going. Right. <laughs> he's like, and then like someone tries to go in, and he's like, "Give it two. Give it two. You know, this doesn't. There's no fart fan in here. I gotta. I got, or he's waving it with like the Gatorade towel. <laughs> we would need like pl actual plumbing though if we had a toilet. On there, you know, if we didn't just have a porta potty, we would actually need plumbing. And maybe we even make a rule like, all right, each team has three bathroom visits a half. And once you used all your bathroom visits, okay, you got to go in the locker room. You got to risk missing a play. Right. If you want to go there. So you get three like challenges. We're like, like all right. Oh, bathroom pass. Remember when you had bathroom a bathroom pass as a oh, kid? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you got to go get it from the ref. Yeah. <laughs> and he. <laughs> The, co it, the, the you, you got to bother the coach for the key. <laughs> I like it. I like this a lot. <laughs> Good innovation. The medical tent like and down the road, the bathroom. Ask, like if the kicker comes and asks the coach, hey, can I, can I get the key? He's like, you're the kicker. You know, <laughs> go back. Yeah, no, no bathroom pass for the kicker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're a, you're a Pittsburgh Steeler kicker hot pants. No bathroom pa pass for you. Uh, best innovation. Did you have one? Yeah. Uh, the stadium uh, sound guy or or radio or, or DJ um, person uh, today at Denver played Taylor Swift songs as the Kansas oh. City Chiefs were leaving, and I just think that's that's so that, oh. that is great, you know, because that that DJ those those sound guys they do a great job mm -hmm. rubbing it in sometimes uh, with their with their choice of songs uh, yeah. and, and and sounds, and you know it's just a much better burn back in the. You know, the turn of the century, you know, we were talking about, you know, um, uh, bands. Remember those old, old fashioned, you know, orchestral, uh, orchestral bands and, and they'd play their tunes and their fight songs. Ah, that's not rubbing it in. We, we, we like mm -hmm. the, we like the innovation of the, the, the DJ, uh, sound person. Yeah. Yeah. We talk about the 12th man all the time. I like when the radio DJ sound person guy tries to insert themselves as some sort of influence on the game. And that's pretty good. You know, play some Taylor Swift songs when, uh, time, when you win. At what point in time do you think a DJ um, uh, for a team says, 
why are we playing this welcome to the jungle it's like 40 years old this damn mm -hmm. song <laughs> yeah yeah i i like a good parody sound drop from the dj like you know when uh the the call goes the wrong way or gets reversed like I, the ultimate one that i always liked in basketball when the opposing team's player fouls out and they play hit the road jack like classic classic uh, Ray, uh, sound guy parody as you play hit the road jack or in ba baseball is good at this as you know I used to work at a minor league baseball stadium as a teenager and every time there was a walk they would play these boots are made for walking by Nancy Sinatra and it would just be like oh perfect perfect sound uh, perfect song match for the situation of the game and everybody would kind of dance along to it yep. cheer I like it I like when you can insert yourself into the game and you don't even play. Good innovation. Next award, cringeworthy award. And I wrote Jordan Love running and throwing. He wasn't good at either. He ran for 15 yards when he needed 16, and he overthrew people and he threw interceptions today. And sec secondary nomination, non contact injuries. Oh, bad. Why are they so rough to watch? Like the Cousins one. That was hard. Ah, <laughs> uh, he just steps wrong, and he, and he just knows it, and he just falls down. Yeah. Jeez. My uh, cringeworthy 49ers tackling uh, today, and any football that was played at New York MetLife Stadium. Oh, <laughs> pretty cringeworthy. I got to say the two West Coast games today, Chargers and San Francisco, beautiful on the West Coast. Sun was out. You know, I'm here in Central Time Zone, and it's dark out and I'm watching like a sunset and it's still daylight there. I'm like, wow, nice, nice on the West coast. You're a, you're a new, you're a New York wall street tycoon. Okay. You, you take your family mm. to the luxury box that you, you get because you are a billionaire and you take your family to a game where both teams combine for 15 punts in the first <laughs> quarter. <laughs> I mean, in the, in the, in the first half, that <laughs> right. is awful. Mm, that's bad. DeVito's only throwing the ball once the whole second half. Yeah. You're, you're Gordon Gecko. You take your family and the yacht, you get driven there in the, in the luxury car. And this is what that's you watch. Like, yeah. Mm. It kind of makes you feel like they deserve it. Right. Because they're so rich. Right. Maybe this is a, a back backhanded fuck you to all the financial yeah, people that screwed football. over. Here's your football. All your, yeah, here's your all football. Your money in the world. You can't yeah, buy good football. You screwed us over on subprime loans during the right. housing crisis. You you're getting corporate bailouts. You know what? Here's your football, rich assholes and stuff. I like, shows. I, like I think that's a that's another hot take. I like that that's now. Going, that's what's going on in New York. Now I don't feel bad for New York at all. Are you a financial movie guy? You strike me like Love you would it. be down with. Love with, them. Love what's your, just, what's your favorite well, financial movie? You, movie, well, Wall Street, obviously. Wall oh, Street. yeah, yeah. Me too. But, no, yeah. but, but billions. I just finished the series last night uh, or mm. two nights ago. Um, fantastic series. Two under-the-radar financial movies I like. Number one is Boiler Room, which... I would say, you know, Boiler Room walked so Wolf of Wall Street could run. There's a lot of things you can see Wolf of Wall Street borrows from that movie. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, Margin Call. Did you ever see Margin Call? No. Really I good. I, I suggest you see Margin Call. Very, very yeah, good I'm movie. Look, I'm going to look for that one. Uh, every, uh, every financial movie is, depicts these people as monsters, horrible people, money-grubbing, selfish always makes me still want to get into the financial world. <laughs> I'm always like, I want to do that. No, it, um, uh, uh, the big short. I really loved, um, I like the movie too. Yeah. It, I've watched it 10 times. I almost understand it. Right. <laughs> almost. Right. <laughs> well, I, I, I need a Margot Robbie explaining things to me while she's in the tub. Right. Right. I like that movie. I, I, I got a little over the Adam McKay inserting Adam McKayness into the movie although explaining is needed in such a complicated <laughs> plot like that all right next award best costume design houston oilers and the yeah, steve large and seahawks i think far and away winner i put a little honorable mention for the vests that the the coaches wore today but i think those uniforms are just yeah too beautiful 
so like, I hope I hope we get to see him again this year. Uh, you have a best costume design, or do you That's agree it. with those yeah, two you, uniforms? You got it. And then I'll throw in there um, what the Oilers did with their stadium uh, design. But, I mean, oh, the, like they put the logos? Yeah. Did yeah, they that was cool. Seattle? I didn't remember. Did they? They had like the old timey Seattle helmet at, at on the fifty. Okay, good. I, I, yeah. I didn't remember. Yeah, they had that. Next award is called Advice Alley. I mentioned it a little bit before, but my advice, Allie, is to all the two and five teams, don't give up. You never know when the Chiefs are going to lay an egg. You never know when the, the Eagles may, you know, get a weird loss. Don't give up. You can still get a wild card spot. We saw it last year. Vikings got hot. Jacksonville Jaguars got hot. Don't give up two and five teams. My 49ers, I'm advising you to fire your defensive coordinator. <laughs> oh, after one game? It's been three straight games. That the oh, season. yeah, that's true. Oh, that's so, so no. Um, uh, but, uh, and again, I already gave some, some guy advice. named PJ I, I <laughs> went down the advice. field on you. I gave some advice to Jason, uh, to Kelsey. Your, your, your brother is living the life right now. Uh, uh, and, and you're getting your head kicked in. You got to get paid, buddy. <laughs> mm. Wow. You're very high on this on this uh on this litigation it's the it's the lawyer I'm, I'm, you. I'm a lawyer and i gotta i i, I figure that there's lawyers out there they gotta protect their interest in, in jason kelsey yeah all right i get it i like it next category the sunday double feature what movie would you want to watch after this week in the nfl you know early games we had you know we got fall weather the time's changing it's dark out it was raining so you know what movie i decided to pair this with the Good Son. Did you ever see The Good Son? Great movie. Yeah, yeah. We're like kind of... I, I don't know if I would say it's a good movie, but it's an interesting watch of a movie. Very dark movie. Uh, clouds. They're on like a lake. It always looks cold where they are. And I think we were really psyched to see what Macaulay Culkin was like as an evil child. <laughs> There's a part where he, where he tells the other guy, Hey, Mark. Don't fuck with me. And we're like, oh shit, he said fuck. Right. I want to watch that movie. And then he, he gets killed at the end. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to watch it. So I went with The Good Son. Nice. Um, For a movie, wow. Uh, What am I going to want to... Because I, I, I'm going to have to... When I go to bed right now, I'm going to probably try to look for a movie. Um, So I am going to go with the one you... Oh, no, I, I'm doing right now. Uh, I'm going to see a documentary on North Korea. That's what I'm going to do. Jeez. Yeah. are you wow gonna go to sleep to a little north korea yep <laughs> why why fascinated by dictators i don't know what it is why do you, oh it's a dictator thing huh yeah did you watch that netflix documentary maybe a year or two ago i think it was called how to be a dictator or yeah. so you that was pretty good that was interesting all the all the like similar attributes they all have <laughs> especially to, uh, the similar attributes to the one we just had <laughs> who's I, that what are you referring to i'm not uh, following I'm not our, our, our 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 former president oh i gotcha so you saw the tie in there huh well i would go with you on that I, I would say you could go with that for a lot of american presidents too like who would want who would want that job though like you know it would take a little bit of an egomaniac to want this job in general don't you think from a psychological point Cause it almost would be like, all right, who wants to be the president of the United States? No, and whoever, whoever raises their hand, you go, all right, you're out. <laughs> I don't yeah. want you. Interesting. And last category, who won the week? I got three nominees. I got Dak Prescott, the Denver defense or will Levis. Ooh, I, I'm going to go, uh, uh, Levis won the week, uh, I mean, just, is it Levis? 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 How do you I say it? Levis. Levis. I think it should be Levi's. I think that'd be cooler. <laughs> uh, it was Levis. Um, and and Dallas won, you know, that they that, that they <clears throat> came through. Dallas, Dallas won big. So I think if you're if you're Jerry Jones, you know, you was a major letdown getting drummed by the 49ers. Um, now the now the 49ers have come back to earth and 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 now. Uh, the Dallas uh, Cowboys are playing with a lot of confidence. So I think the Dallas Cowboys yeah. won the week. Yeah. Yeah. I, I knew it'd be hard for you to, to make that pick, 
But the Cowboys won. They really they they bounce back. They're getting the wins. I mean, look at let's follow the two stocks, 49ers and Dallas. They they went two opposite you, you ways. Gotta, you gotta be buying Dallas right now. Right, right. So now we got to think where is going to be the letdown from Dallas and how is San Francisco going to rebound? So if you say like, oh, can you rebound? Dallas rebounded. It can be done. It's a long season. So that I'm watching those two teams trajectory for the season. But, for hey, the, but that, that game, game next one. week with Dallas, Philadelphia, it's going to be a huge test for the Cowboys. Right. If the Cowboys, well, let's do a quick, if they win, if they lose, if the Cowboys win, I'm, cream of the crop are they elite of the elite maybe and if philly wins i mean it's a confirmation but if dallas wins and is that the sunday night game i don't even know probably i don't know i don't know either but those sunday night games just it seems like they count for three games right i can't wait to watch it uh i think a little credit needs to go sean payton's way he's had a horrendous season and they beat kansas city they hold them to nine points or maybe 12. I think they got a field goal. Uh, let's give Sean Payton a little win for the season. Okay, that, that's his win. That's his win. All right, that was the Sunday Night Talk. That was the awards for week eight leaving. You may have noticed we didn't really talk about my team, Omar. That's because they are playing Monday night. The Las Vegas Raiders go into... Detroit. Now it's time for us to pick the game. Las Vegas Raiders, Detroit. Detroit is giving seven and a half points. The over and under is 46.5. Omar, pick the game. I, I expect Detroit to to uh to have a big game. I think they're gonna I think they're gonna be ready. I think this is a national spotlight game. Remember the big, you know, Detroit's one of those teams that in previous years, the last 20 years since Barry Sanders played, um, and they had a few, you know, Stafford, Calvin Johnson uh, matchups against the Cowboys. But hey, you want to get back in prime time? I think they'll be ready. And again, I'm just not, I'm just not high on the Raiders. If the Raiders lose this game, this is a true Josh McDaniels clean out your locker. There's no way he stays. If they lose this game, it has been a rough, rough year. I don't know who's starting at quarterback even for the Raiders. We need a big, big bounce back. I have a feeling it's going to happen though, Omar. I told you, don't give up on two and five teams. Don't give up. So I'm going to go the Raiders, get the win in Detroit. Let's turn the corner, everybody. That was the Sunday night talk for week eight. Omar joins me. Look at you toughed it out after a 49ers loss. That's why... That's why we are professionals. New subscribers this week onto the channel. So welcome everybody for Omar Carmona. For hey. me, Patrick Ramirez, that was week eight, the Sunday night talk. I will see everybody next week. Thank you, Omar. Thank you. That's it. That's the episode. That is week eight in the NFL. That is week eight on the Sunday night talk right here on the Running It Back Network. I want to thank Omar for joining me as usual. I want to thank the NFL for supplying us with a full slate of games. And I want to thank the Houston Oilers. I mean the Tennessee Titans for wearing those awesome uniforms today. A lot to look forward to Monday night too. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, please give my channel a subscribe. It helps the channel. We gain a few new subscribers every week. And it's great because now you have access to everything on the channel, my stand-up clips, and my other YouTube shows as well. More is going up there all the time as well, so check it out. I have a great interview on the Running It Back channel with Greg Benevit, comedian. If you haven't listened to it, go check it out. I want to thank Omar for joining me. I want to thank you, the loyal listener, and I will see everybody next week on the Sunday Night Talk.